Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, everyone. Big L, Triple L, Triple H, whatever you want to call him, go for it. Bertha Hurt over here. We are pumped up, everybody. It's a new month, so you know what that means. We're going to talk to you about the expected dividend increases for you, your portfolio, our portfolios, and everybody's portfolios. This October of 2021. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Give Bert and I a nice thumbs up. We're back in action talking to you about these October 2021 expected dividend increases, you know, really based on that historical pattern of these dividend stocks. You know, and Bert, we've got a few dividend stocks here to talk about. That's right, Lanny, and you hit a great point there. The reason why we can talk about this is because we obviously are dividend investors. We love dividend growth stocks, dividend aristocrats, dividend kings, because we want that growing consistent income these companies that have demonstrated over the years that they can increase their dividend for a long haul for 25, 30, 40, 50 years. They also like consistency too. So they are very scheduled. They're very consistent with when they pay their dividends, when they increase their dividends. Therefore, we can look ahead to see which companies we should expect to receive a dividend increase from in the coming month with a pretty high success rate. You know, obviously we also love consistency. It helps in managing the portfolio managing expectations. The only thing that I don't like that goes outside of plan is when the increases are higher than what I expect. <laughs> that's right, Lanny. So that's why we have found five companies that we feel very confident are going to increase their dividend and one potential bonus company that we're gonna talk about that may or may not announce an increase, but it's gonna be a very high profile stock to keep wow. an eye on. I don't even know what you're about to talk about here. Um, you know, we kind of do these videos live, not really a scripted discussion because we just wanna give it to you the way that we're analyzing it, the way that we see it, the way that Burt reviews, the way that I review these. These are five stocks and Burt, the That's first one is gonna be fun yeah. to talk about. Yeah, let's do it, let's jump right in, go to your wallet pull out a nice credit card, chances are it's a Visa. This company, Visa, ticker symbol V. What's nuts about Visa and MasterCard is they just crush a oh, hole. I like it, I like it. We have some props, everybody. We're ready to go outside of our coffee mugs. What's cool about Visa is they have just absolutely crushed it over the last decade or so as people move from cash to cashless payments there and they continue to show that they are gonna be a company to reckon with in the future. You know, obviously with PayPal, Venmo, you know, other apps, Cash App, where people are transferring funds, you know, Visa is still pretty prevalent. There's still a lot of untapped markets, especially in the international markets that Visa hasn't been able to tap into yet. And they really make a lot of their funds, obviously, off the processing and interchange fees across the industry. That's exactly right. So they are a low dividend yield, high dividend growth rate stock. In fact, their dividend yield is below 0.6%. Ooh, so ooh. yeah, it's very low. That's why a lot of people typically shy away from them. Higher than your ally, your That's Amex, right. Goldman Sachs savings accounts. That's absolutely right. But at least they increased that dividend at a strong clip. Their five-year average dividend growth rate is 18.15%. You know, the interesting thing was during the pandemic, that increase was actually very small at only 6.67%. You know, something that you'd expect to be a little bit higher for Visa. Especially given the fact that so many people had to make online orders and it had to be processed online, you would have expected Visa to have a larger increase and that they would have really benefited. You know, the last big increase, they went from 25 cents to 30 cents. And then last year they went from 30 to 32. So Bert, knowing that, what do you think they're gonna do this year? I think they're gonna get to 35 or 36 cents. So a three to four cent increase in their quarterly dividend. What about yeah, you? I'm calling three cents as well, kind of around that 10% dividend growth rate this year, which is still rock solid. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, this is one stock where if they blow me away with expectations, I'll be pretty freaking happy. Yeah, I thank you. Well, I wish I owned them too, and I wish I got in on them earlier like you did, because they were one of your did first you companies. Did you buy American Express? I did not. No, oh, we bought Discover though for my wife. So uh, DFS. Yeah, let's move into stock number two, a company my wife has been buying a lot of over the last month, especially. Boom. Don't know why we went with the headbutt there, it's but the headbutt. hey. Dividend stock number two, AbV, ticker symbol ABBV. So yeah, we'll throw a link in here to one of our stock analysis. That, yeah. that ticker symbol always cracks me up a little bit. I know, it is funny just when you look at it and then you look at how the company's name is spelled out. I'm with you on that one. I feel yeah. it. 
So yeah, we'll put the link here to our analysis of after their stock price dropped, after they ran into some issues with the FDA and having to print some new labels for some of their drugs, which we covered in that video, so we'll keep it out here. They showed strong signs of undervaluation. From a dividend growth perspective, how could you not love their stock? Their yield is almost 4.8% at the moment. Almost 5% dividend yielding stock. And Bird, go blow everybody away with that five-year dividend growth rate. Average. Yeah, and I think the craziest thing about AbbVie is the fact that they have a strong dividend increase for a company that's yielding nearly 5%. Their five-year average dividend growth rate is 18.35%. So that five-year growth rate at 18%, they really kind of kept up with it during the pandemic because they increased their dividend almost over 10% last year. Yeah. So nearly 5% yield plus a double-digit dividend growth rate. Excellent, fantastic stuff for AbbVie. This one's gonna be tricky though. Their increase is always at the tail end of the month. So sometimes it's the last week of October, sometimes it's the first week of November. It really just depends on the year. So Burr, what is your expectation for AbbVie? I think, I'm thinking it's gonna be another 10%-ish increase. Whoa. I don't think they're gonna hit the five-year average. I think it'll so be you're calling 13 last cents year. probably? Yeah, what do you think? I'm calling 10 cents for AbbVie at 7.7%. Well. I hope I'm right in this one, Lanny. Sorry. Mm. If you're right, if you're, if you're with Bert with the 10%, give us the video a thumbs up. Let's see it. Let's, yeah. see the, let's see the thumb light up blue right now. Yeah, let's move back into Ohio for company uh -oh. number three, Columbus. Oh, OH, baby. I-O. Man. Yeah, this isn't as, the fun, most fun sector to talk about, though. But, but it's, it's consistent. Important. It's consistent, and it's a huge part of every dividend investor's portfolio. We're going to be talking about a utility company here, American yes. Electric Power, yes. AEP. <laughs> Get hyped, everybody. Get hyped. Get people going. It's time for electric utilities here. Wow, exciting. Yeah, This company is just a solid utility stock. I've owned them for a long time, and you just kind of set and forget it, and you're just pumped up every time you look at your the gains yeah, you've had yeah. on them. It's the like Brock Lesnar, you know, Bautista pumped up. Yeah, they do get pretty amped up. Not quite Ultimate Warrior pumped up, though. Oh. It's not that level yet. I don't think you can get a utility you're up to Ultimate that Warrior point. level, okay. But their dividend yield is 3.64%, which is a little bit lower for a utility company. But their growth rate's a little bit better for a utility company. Exactly, yeah, their five-year dividend growth rate is 5.74%, and last year's dividend increase was 5.7%. It's a very consistent NARC. It's always right around that. Is that what you're going for this year? Yeah, I think that's exactly what I'm going Four for. 4% increase you're predicting? Yeah, just like last year, right? I, I think agree. it is. So, all Four right. 4 cents, for, we think they're gonna go from 74 to 78, 5.4% increase. However, if it's only three cents, we better see lower utility bills because of it. At least if you're gonna hurt us on the dividend, help us out on that. AP, if you're watching, you heard it from, uh, from Bert. Yeah, you're on notice, everybody. Wow, Bert, so that was a third dividend stock. Again, to kind of recap already, you know, we've talked about Visa, we've talked about Abvi, we've talked about AEP, Burr, what is this fourth dividend growth stock we're here I was just about. about to sip my coffee, so I'll put it right back down. This company right. is VF Corp, ticker symbol VFC. You want to talk about some of the brands, landing? You know, first they have the very popular, you know, kind of, you know, artistic slash um, unique, exclusive brand of Supreme. Um, they also own the North Face, Vans, Timberland, Dickies, Jansport. They have a pretty deep portfolio of brands out there on your retail store shelves. Um, you know, but again, VF Corp, kind of an interesting company yielding 2.87%. The retail, but really just the maker, they don't really have the VF Corp store, but they have like mini stores or the products are in other retailers. Which probably benefits them benefits them in the long run as that's the trend of where things are going. Less big box retailers, more to be able to buy it online at other stores. So I think that's a good move for them. Last year, they increased that dividend 2.1% when they Ooh. did announce that increase, which was lower than their five-year average dividend growth rate of 5.92%. Interesting. So they're currently paying a 49 cent quarterly dividend. They increased it one cent last year. I think we're both gonna be on the same page of where we think this dividend increase is going, aren't we? One cent, wah, wah, wah. 50 cents, so. They're not getting into that Emerson 3M territory here. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not where we want to be. I don't own them. AT&T territory when they used to be a dividend growth stock. But so we're predicting what a 2% increase, 1%? Yeah. Yep, 
no reason to see it differently, unfortunately. Come on. Surprise us, though. Surprise us, hey, VF Corp. If you own VF Corp stock, let us know in the comments what your prediction is for VF Corp. Let us know why you bought them, why you're holding as well. I'm curious. All right. Number five, we're coming back to Ohio. Wow. There are a lot of great dividend growth stocks in Ohio. Dogs got to eat, though. It does. So Let's we're going to head about an hour south of us, Lanny, would you about say? About an hour, about 50 minutes. Yeah, RPM International, ticker symbol R. Love this company. P. M. Great company. Fantastic company. Medina, Ohio. Yeah. Quiet dividend. They're a dividend aristocrat or a dividend king? I can't remember. Anyway, quiet dividend growth stock in the manufacturing sector. You're not seeing the brands out there, but they play a major role in your lives, which is how they've been able to increase that dividend over the years. Their yield is just under 2% at 1.94% at the moment. Their five-year average dividend growth rate is 6.71%. And last year, that dividend increase was 5.5%. You know, and I think they're going to stay consistent. Yeah. I think they're going from $0.38 cents per quarter to $0.40. Cents. Yep. The year before, they did a $0.02 cent increase. So I think that's very much in line. You know, if they do a $0.02 cent increase, that'll equate out to another 5.3% increase. Yeah, just a hair below their five-year dividend growth rate. That seems about right. Yeah. I mean, that'll put them at... 40 cents then per share per quarter, you know, kind of keeps keeps that growth rate right on that average mark. I think shareholders would be happy because you're getting a lot of price appreciation with that stock of RPM International. Now, and not too bad, pretty a uh, pretty steady month. Um, yeah. But Bert, you said there's something interesting you wanted to talk about in this yep. video. So we got through the five companies that we th for sure are feeling if you good about. Made it this far, smash the heck out of that like button. Give Bird a nice subscription here because, man, he's got a surprise here for us. It's not really a surprise. We talked about it in one of our last videos where we talked big oil. This is going to have to be the month if Exxon wants to retain that dividend aristocrat Exxon status. Mobile. They are going to have to announce a dividend increase because they always announce that fourth quarter dividend in October. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. So Exxon Mobil, ticker symbol XOM. So, Bert. Why are they being talked about here in October again? Because they haven't increased their dividend for a couple years now. So in order for you to retain your dividend aristocrat status, you need to pay a higher dividend in the current year than the year before. Some, so in 2020, they kept their dividend aristocrat status despite not increasing their dividend because the overall dividend paid to shareholders in 2020 was greater than the dividend paid to shareholders in 2019. Yeah, way to show that was in 2020, if you were a shareholder, you received a total of $3.48 in dividend, which was greater than your 2019 dividend total, which you received $3.43 um, in total for each share that you owned. So they need to increase it this quarter, even if it's only a half of a cent, because you'll get it paid in December. That's exactly right, Lanny. So that's why we're thinking there could be a potential increase for that reason. <sighs> Oil has gotten a huge bump from that price per barrel. Their revenue is growing again. Their earnings are growing. They've helped slim down their balance sheet, so less interest expense being paid out there. So more cash flow to potentially distribute back. You've seen Shell start increasing its dividend again Chevron. over the last year. Yeah, Chevron announced it to Ch BP. Chevron announced it. That's like your, that's your competitor right there. Yep. So that's signs are leading to a very small increase potentially from Exxon, like you said, a potential half cent per quarter. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. All right, Exxon shareholders, leave a comment if you think that there's going to be an mm -hmm. increase in that final week of October. Yeah, we wanted to keep this separate from the other five though, because this one is pure speculation from this point. So to summarize the five dividend growth stocks, we expect to increase their dividend. We've got Visa at number one. At V at number two. We're hitting with the third dividend growth stock with AEP American Electric Power. VF Corp, so the fourth company. And the last one, Lanny is RPM International, RPM, and then that bonus exclusive company that may or may not, I know the investing community is hoping for it, Exxon Mobil. Yeah, and again, these aren't gonna be all the companies that are gonna increase their dividend, so let us know if you are expecting a dividend increase in October that we did not feature in this video. If you haven't done so already, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a beat on everything dividend investing news, and stock purchases and analyses related. Yeah, check our Twitter feed throughout the month too because we'll be highlighting once these increases happen. 
That was Burton. This was Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Oh, we're in that. that.